And now you have this place where we're a culture that values celebrities so that the fact that you have some has changed your game as well, hasn't it? Like it's allowed you to go into places that perhaps you wouldn't have otherwise been able to go. I've had very kind of mixed feelings about this, and I have indeed used celebrities at times in the Half the Sky documentary for TV. We chose actresses, very prominent actresses, and went with them because we thought that was a way of tugging people along. Uh, I once went to uh, Darfur where I brought George Clooney along because I thought that people would want to read about George Clooney more than they would about Darfuris. Yeah, watch this for just a second. You know, I always wanted to be a a newspaper man, you know, I want to be a writer and write really important things. And then, well, I became an actor and didn't do so many important things. But I'm with a really, really important writer, won a Pulitzer Prize, in fact, for writing on this subject. Um, and uh, I'm sharing a room with him. And I suppose the lesson there is, um, you, you know, you win a Pulitzer Prize and well, you, you get to shack up with the two-time sexiest man alive. And <laughs> that seems, that seems fair to me. I love that clip, man. No, and, and, but in your, you're getting to work with celebrities, but I mean, even in your own sense, you've, you've taken on this this place where people are sort of looking to you as kind of the next version of a, whatever a, a celebrity journalist is, I suppose. Do you feel that? Um, I mean, I feel a little bit awkward uh, about the limelight when it comes on me. We're used to, we're essentially, as journalists, we're in the lighting business. We hold those spotlights and we try to hold it on somebody else to get that issue on the agenda. And it, um, it sometimes works to have the, shine, the, the light on us as well, but it does feel a little bit, a little bit weird. I know that when I, I'd spent a bit of time going to Darfur and even in sub-Saharan Africa, you see this criticism of the great white hope, the outside, the white savior coming in. What do you make of that? Essentially, I think that it's, um, um, it's profoundly wrong to inject race in any form in these kinds of issues. And at the end of the day, the problem for Darfuris hasn't been that you know, white saviors want to help them. It's that, frankly, that their skin color is not white. Uh, the, the, the world was willing to help um, Kosovars, uh, help Bosnians. Uh, it was not willing to help Rwandans or Darfuris. And I think that we should not be worrying about people's skin color one way or the other. Um, and I know, as you know, you were there, the Darfuris, they want, hope from any, they want help from anybody who can provide it. For sure.